Tim Nering joins us now. Tim, recently promoted to vice president of baseball operations. For Yankees fans, how did your job change over the course of the last few months? Well, obviously, we lost uh, Billy Epler. Um, big shoes to fill. Um, when I came over to the Yankees about eight years ago. I've basically been in the pro scouting department working for Billy Epler, and I was basically in charge of going out and seeing National League players, present future values of those those players, and then do a cross checklist of American League potential free agents. Uh, six weeks ago, we were out advancing the Royals. Brian called me up and basically said, I'm going to need somebody close to me on a lot of these decisions that are going to be made. Uh, so my job is still going to be evaluating players, but I'll probably be more with the Yankee Major League Club and then obviously spend more time uh, analyzing our, our own system. In your previous role, one of the players that you did study and sent back a good report was Didi Gregorius. And obviously last year he had a great first season with the Yankees. What did you see in Gregorius that led you to believe he could benefit the Yankees? Well, I, you know, this was going on for multiple years. We always knew there was going to be a day when there was no Derek Jeter and, and pinstripes. So every rock was being turned over. Uh, had a chance to see Didi Gregorius uh, over a couple years playing for Arizona. Obviously love the athleticism. Uh, there's some things that he's doing offensively. I think he can even be better uh, as far as tweaking his approach and his swing. Uh, I love the range. I love the defense. I love the idea that this guy can throw out a play that very few in the league can demonstrate on a nightly basis. Uh, I, I, I'm very, very happy how he came in to a different league, a market like New York, following Derek Jeter, and struggled early, and then showed the ability to bounce back and basically was one of our better players down the stretch. So I was very happy for Didi as a person. And I think he's only scratching the surface of what kind of uh, Yankee player he can be. When you look at the way that baseball is viewed and analyzed now, there's a lot of emphasis on saber metrics, on different stats. How much has scouting changed since you started? Oh, it's changed quite a bit. I, I can remember back when I was a farm director, uh, director of player development. One of the things that would always happen is a player would show up and the player development, the coaches would say, what did the scouts see with this guy? Well, basically, we were looking out the side of the apple, all the holes, the worm holes, and everything else, what the player could not do because that's how we set up our development plan to make him better. The scout sees the shiny side of the player, the shiny side of the apple, everything he can do. Why should we sign this player? So now there's not only two sides of the apple anymore. Now it's analytics. There's all these different things. We have people that look at a player in a certain way. We have uh, older school scouts that now have to be aware of the analytics and, and, and the statistical data that is right there for us. And if you ignore it, it's it, it, you got nobody to blame but yourself. It's, it, it gives us, if we're lucky enough to see a guy play 10% of the season and with our own eyes, uh, that's, a, that's a great long look. There's 90% 90, 90 of, of, of the season that we don't see with our own eyes. Maybe the statistical data will, you know, fill in the, uh, the missing pieces. So, Tim, when a player is drafted into the Yankees system now, I think four or five years ago when people said, well, Yankees just go out and sign free agents. They don't need the young players. If I'm a young player in the system now, how positive am I knowing that I might be fast-tracked if I show the ability to play at every level, that I got a better chance to get in the majors than maybe I did in the past? Yeah, there's there's no doubt. I mean, I, I think we've all watched how the Yankees have been over the years, and obviously they have the capability. We have the capability to play in the free agent market, which is great. Uh, the one thing that was nice being a scout for – this organization, uh, every player that I went to watch, I knew we could have a discussion about. We could possibly acquire this guy somehow, some way. We weren't going to be restricted, if you will, uh, as a minor league player now. And Brian's done a great job of it. He has proven to the organization, you will get a chance here. And we have some nice young players, you know, knocking on the door right now. You know, Bird, Judge, Gary Sanchez has really established himself uh, here recently. And, probably have one of the better uh, years uh, coming out. So I, I, I'm really excited about the nucleus of young players. Uh, Severino, what he's done on the mound. Uh, there's there's a, a bright future here in the short term as far as 
Yankee in-house kids. You had a very solid career with the Red Sox. What is something that happened to you in your career that you now lean on in your current role? You look back and say, wow, that happened to me as a player. This is helping me now in doing my job. Well, I think the biggest thing, what you want to do is, is try to find, I, I, I happen to be a plate discipline guy. I walked on base, those type of things. So obviously, talking to Stick Michael, Stick's like, you need to find players that were comparable to yourself. See if you can find guys that have strike zone discipline and, and go from there. Um, I think the next stop in my career after I was finished playing, working in, with all the kids in the minor leagues, I think the biggest thing is when you first see a player, you can recognize their tools, what they can do, what, what their physical abilities are. But I think working in player development, the, the biggest thing is players that ha show the ability to make adjustments. Those players that now allow for their tools to play on a, on a day in and day out basis. And not only getting to the major leagues, but can they make adjustments night to night, pitch to pitch, that allows them to stay in the big leagues for a long time. So I think after I was playing and then going into the player development part of it, I think that helped a great deal to kind of get a better understanding of what the whole player is all about. Not just the tools that they have, but how they implement uh, and how they play the game of baseball. You'd mentioned in this new role that you'll still be doing the pro scouting, but you'll also have to familiarize yourself a little bit more with that minor league system. How much are you looking forward to that aspect of things, to be able to see what's coming up through the system? That's it. I, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, in the, in the past, I've done basically the, all the National League, as I stated. Uh, I would see scouts that had our system, and they would continually bring up exciting players, Mateo, the shortstop, Bird, Judge. They would bring these guys up. And I really hadn't had a chance to see him, you know, besides the short look that you might see guys in spring training. Uh, you obviously follow everything that they're doing on the analytics side and the statistical side. And you, you, you know what is going on in the organization, but uh, there's nothing like s setting your own two eyes on the player and, and getting a chance to see what they actually can do. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm hoping to maybe see everybody uh, th three times through each, each level. And, uh, and then spend a lot more time with our major league club. A lot of exciting names to keep an eye on. Tim, thanks for the time. We appreciate uh, it. Thanks for having me.